In today's story, I'll be telling you about an activist who spans the gap from traditional environmentalism as part of her indigenous culture through to driving environmental policy on the global stage. Hello, it's James from the Global Portrait Project, where I'm painting 193 portraits of 193 subjects, with each person involved in their country in a positive environmental action. And today it's the turn of country number 34, Chad. The subject for my portrait for Chad is Hindu Umaru Ibrahim, environmental activist and geographer who is an expert in indigenous people's adaptation to climate change and traditional ecological knowledge. Chad proved to be a difficult country to find a subject to paint. I usually use social media or email to identify a subject. After a couple of months of failing to make any strong contact with any good leads in Chad, I made a decision to paint Hindu, despite the fact that to this day I have still not been able to make contact with her. I chose Hindu because on searching Chad an environmentalist online, she was always the standout result and her story is so full and inspiring. This is the first painting in the project and story I have told when I have not had contact or communication with the subject. I am hoping that at some point Hindu sees this video and is pleased with the result. So if you are watching this Hindu, please do get in contact and let me know. Equally, if this video displeases you, let me know and I will take it down and destroy the painting. Chad is a landlocked country at the crossroads of North and Central Africa. It is bordered by countries beginning with S, L, two beginning with N and two with C. Chad has several regions, a desert zone in the south, an arid Sahelian belt in the centre and a more fertile savanna zone in the south. Lake Chad, after which the country is named, is the second largest wetland in Africa. Chad has significant environmental concerns. In a 2018 survey, it was found to be the country most vulnerable to climate change. Chad has issues with increasing desertification and suffers from both floods and droughts. This is amplified by high levels of poverty and a long history of civil unrest. Lake Chad has been the second largest wetlands area in Africa and is essential for the way of life of people and wildlife living in the area. And yet the area of the lake has diminished down to only 10% of the size it was back in the 1960s. Hindu is an environmental activist who has been working for over 15 years on behalf of her people, the Mbororo in Chad. She works to empower indigenous voices and ensure their inclusion on international platforms. Whilst Hindu was a student in Mdajemana, she noticed she was discriminated against as an indigenous woman and also of the ways in which her Mbororo counterparts were excluded from the educational opportunities she received. As a response to this in 1999, Hindu founded the Association of Indigenous Pearl Women and Peoples of Chad, the AFPAT, promoting rights and providing environmental advocacy for indigenous people. Hindu has witnessed firsthand the effects of climate change as her community rely on natural resources for their survival and have been directly impacted by the drying up of Lake Chad and as such are direct victims of climate change. Many in her community have also been displaced as climate change has forced them to abandon their lands. Since 2005, Hindu has participated in international negotiations on climate, sustainable development, biodiversity and environmental protection. Hindu has written on the rights of indigenous people to own and manage their lands. Such legal rights guarantee that indigenous communities have legal agency 
in economic developments that might displace them, such as oil drilling, mining and hydropower. Hindu states that indigenous peoples must be inspirations for the world. Despite being only 5% of the world's population, they are protecting 80% of the world's biodiversity. Hindu is also an academic geographer and has been working combining science, technology and traditional knowledge to help find climate solutions using 3D or 2D participatory mapping. She recently worked around Lake Chad mapping over 3,000 square kilometres of land where pastoralists, nomads, farmers and fishing peoples have been living together for centuries. Satellite images of the area were taken and printed. Hindu then went to the communities where every single step of indigenous knowledge around the map was gathered. From the rivers to the well, to the lakes, to the agriculture areas, to the different crabs, to the sacred forest, to the forest that is used to gather food and to the medicinal plants. All this knowledge was added onto the map in different languages. A digital version of the map was taken as a permanent record and Hindu printed the map to give it back to the communities. This provides a comprehensive understanding of resources within those communities. In 2016, Hindu was selected to represent civil society at the signing of the historic Paris Climate Agreement. In 2018, Hindu attended the United Nations Climate Change Conference, where she expressed the view that the change must come from governments and policymakers. Hindu stated that the peoples of the developing world are the primary victims of climate change, despite the fact that they are not the principal contributors to carbon emissions. In 2019, she became one of the 17 people to be appointed as an advocate of the Sustainable Development Goals. These are 17 goals adopted in 2015 and is the United Nations way of trying to make the world a better place. In 2017, Hindu was recognised as a National Geographical Society Emerging Explorer a programme that recognises and supports outstanding scientists, conservationists, storytellers and innovators. She has since received a number of other awards, including the Pritzker Emerging Environmental Genius Award in 2019, and in 2020, Refugees International gave her the Richard C. Holbrook Award for her contribution to promoting the rights and interests of vulnerable communities. In 2019, Hindu was listed by Time magazine as one of the 15 women championing action on climate change. Most recently, Hindu attended COP27 in Egypt, where her message about the impact of climate change on her community were brought into sharp focus as her community were at that very moment suffering from flooding and the year before had been severely affected by drought. The Indigenous Peoples Caucus had brought together leaders to discuss their problems, but also to share the solutions to many climate change issues that sit within Indigenous communities and have allowed them to live in harmony and balance with nature for centuries. This was then taken to the broader meeting to negotiate for funding to help mitigate some of the impacts wrought by climate change.
If you'd like to find out more about Hindu and AFPA team, I have put some links in the description below. Final words from Hindu are, since centuries, indigenous peoples have protected the environment, which provides them food, medicine, and so much more. Now it's time to protect their unique traditional knowledges that can bring concrete solutions to implement sustainable development goals and fight climate change. There is more information about this painting and how to get involved with the Global Portrait Project on the website and Instagram page and the links are in the description below. Next time we'll be meeting a photographer documenting and educating about the wild environment in Chile.